Hi everyone, welcome to Donna Just Being Real, the only way to be. And today's topic we're going to get into, Todd Bowles is head coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers football team. Woo! Congratulations, Todd Bowles. You got it. Okay, so I'm going to be discussing a little bit about Todd Bowles, just a little bit of his personal life, and then I'm going to also read an article, and then I'm going to play the press conference to hear what he has to say about it. Congratulations. And I didn't know there's not too many black head coaches out here in the NFL, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to get congratulations where it's due, and I'm so proud of him, so happy for him. Okay, so, you know, Todd Bowles used to play – for um, he used to be the skills to play. He was the head coach for the New York Jets, and that was in 2015 to 2018. Yes, he was the coach for there, and I'm from New York, so I love the Jets, and I was just so happy to have him as a coach. I thought he was doing he was doing a phenomenal job, but they fired him. Unfortunately, I think it was just a team, but that's just my thoughts and opinions or whatever. But they fired him. But you know what, Todd Bowles? You know, in life. God will close one door and open up some new doors. So look at you now. You are the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers football team. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, so, you know, he was married to a lady by the name of um, Jill Jenkins. And they have, you know, some children together. I believe these are two boys, and they're a little bit older now. So you can see the boys here. They're a little bit older than the two sons that he had with her. And I believe they also have a daughter together. I could be wrong. I might be standing to be corrected. So make sure you can correct me in the comment section. Let me know. But, you know, just let me know. And also, hit the like button. I forgot to say that. Hit the like button and share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section about all this. Let me know. Did you hear about this? What do you think? Are you hyped up about it? I don't know. Just let me know. And also, let me know who is your favorite um, football team, if you're into football or not. All right. So, let me go back. So, that was the first wife. Now, this is his current wife right here on the right. And her name is Tanika Bowles. And they got married in 2012, and they're still together now. Let me go back. I don't know if it's like the first wife. They was married. They had got married in 2000 and divorced in 2008. But she died. In February 19, 2017. So, rest in peace, Diva. Rest in peace. You know, so she died. And let me show you an old picture of Todd Bowles. Mm -hmm. He still is a cutie pie. Oh, my God. I think he's just absolutely gorgeous. You know what I mean? And, you know, what's not so gorgeous about him? That he's a successful man. And, you know, he he's doing good things. He's positive. He's a family man. You know, he's married. We don't hear no scandals, anything about him and stuff like that. So, that's what I have to say. It's got to give him credit. Credit is due. Okay. Um, let me show you some more pictures here. So, it's right here. We're here in the um, Tampa Buccaneers. All right. So, now I discussed the first wife and now the second wife. And what I... Ooh. I forgot to add something here. Now, this is the second wife. This is the child that him and his second wife, the second wife they have on his right side. This is their son that they have together. And the other two sons you see on the on the far right and the far left, that's from the first marriage. You know, rest in peace, Diva. Rest in peace. I know your boys missed you. Rest in peace. All right, let me get into this article. And, um, and then I'll share a little bit more of my thoughts and opinions. All right. This article I have is from Anscape. Todd Bowles gets the support that he needs on and off the field in second stint as NFL head coach. After a rough tenure with the Jets, Bowles is getting a better opportunity with the Buccaneers, something black coaches aren't affordable very often. In a surprising matter, Todd Bowles is getting a second chance. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers announced Wednesday night that Bowles, the team's successful defense coordinator, has replaced head coach Bruce Aarons. Let me show you Bruce Aarons real quick. Where are you? Where are you? All right, Bruce Aarons is the guy that's on the right. Okay. Who unexpectedly stepped down and moved into the front row off, excuse me, the front office row with organization, given a new five-year contract to lead the Buccaneers. Bowles moves out front again. Additionally, during a horrible time for the inclusive hiring and coaching, the NFL has another black on-field leader. Congratulations, Todd Bowles! Woo, cutie pie. 
Okay, beginning in 2015, Bowles served as New York Jets head coach for the four seasons while superbly guiding the Buccaneers defense the past three seasons and helping the team win the Super Bowl 55. Bowles proves that he is worthy of another opportunity to run his own shop. After Bowles did not receive a job offer during the 2021 to 2022 hiring cycle, Aarons expressed frustration with the lack of movement for the qualified assistance of color overall. The fact that Bowles and the Buccaneers offensive coordinator um, Brian Leftwich, who is also black, didn't move up after the team's numerous accomplishments the past two seasons underscored that something is wrong with the system, Aaron said. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you, are you hearing this? Mm-hmm. I resume reading. <clears throat> it took Aaron's to step aside for Bowles to move up. Uh, so congratulations. Congratulations. He moved up. Okay. Although Aaron's is 69, has overcome health problems during his career, his health was not a factor in his decision to change his job duties within the organization, he said. Rather, the two-time Associated Press NFL Coach of the Year was ready for a change. He said that he has been developing a secession plan for weeks. Hmm. Bowles, 58, was the top of Aaron's list. Now, this man is 58. Ladies and gentlemen, he does not look 58. He looked like he's in his 40s. Great skin. OMG. Hmm. I resume reading. Apparently, the Glazer family. All right, let me let me get show you a picture of the Glazer family. Okay, here we go. I resume. Reading. All right. Um, apparently, the Glazer family, which owns the franchise and general manager Jason Lith, agreed with Aaron's assessment of Bowles, whose promotion provide continuing continually on the coaching. On the coaching staff, I am appreciative of Glacier's family and Jason Lynch for having faith in me and to take on the role and to coach Aaron's for the support and guidance over the past four decades. So they've been rocking for a long time. You know, you can have some good friends and they will look out for you. And when you do have good friends, ladies and gentlemen, don't let it go because it's very rare. I resume reading. Both said in a statement. Tampa has become home for my family, and we are excited to remain part of this community for years to come. So, his family loves it. They happy. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy for him to resume reading. As an organization, we have all the pieces in place to continue the winning standards that has been established here in recent years. I am eager to get started with our new with our players coaching staff and front office in preparation for 2022 season you go bowls all right bowls joined mike Tom, tomlin tomlin i hope i pronounce it right excuse me if i'm not of the pittsburgh steelers and lovey smith of the houston texan as a league's only black head coaches the nfl has 32 teams. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you hearing this? So we got to get credit to do. You know, OMG. All right, I'm just going to stop reading this article. I think you got the gist of it. So now I'm going to play the press conference. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So listen to the music and give me a second while I share it out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play the press conference. So we're going to hear what Todd Bowles had to say about his big success. Oh, this is awesome. All right, make sure you share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Hit the like button. Let's get it. Uh, First, it's kind of bittersweet for me, obviously, with Coach Aaron stepping down. He's been in my life for maybe four decades 
so to speak. Again, not dating how old we are, but you know, I've gone from being a son to a nephew, to a cousin, to a brother. And we've grown over the years immensely. And I'm sure the staff, the coaches on the staff can say the same thing. There's not one person on this staff that he hasn't touched in some kind of way personally and in their personal lives as well as coaching lives. So for us as a coaching staff, you know, he would sorely be missed because when Bruce walks in the room, there's a big presence when he walks in the room. Uh, the only thing we have in common probably is our bald heads at this point, <laughs> but he smokes, I don't, he drinks, I don't. So we got along well because we never got in each other's way. So from that category, but you know, speaking to me personally from a man to a point, he will probably be, if not probably, definitely is the most influential coaching figure, father figure, speak that I've ever had in my life in this league. So as long as I shall live or continue to be in this league. And I just want to thank him personally before I go on just face to face. So the whole world knows uh, what he's meant to me, what he means to our coaching staff what he means as a family man, what he means as just hearing advice from us, taking advice from us, cracking the whip, uh, understanding who's in the building, being comfortable in his skin, making everyone else feel comfortable in their skin and allowing us to coach football. You don't get that everywhere. OK, you don't get that everywhere. He teaches. He takes advice. He understands. And that's what you need to be a good leader. And I will try to do that going forward. And we have plenty of guys on this staff, coaching wise, that are great leaders, great men, great individuals and fun to be around. We're not changing the program. We're trying to add on because when you don't win the Super Bowl, despite the record, we're good enough, but not great. And we got to tweak some things and do better as ourselves, as coaches, which we'll go on to do as well as try to teach that to the players so we can go on to do that. But as a man today from the coaching staff and myself, we send our respect out to Coach Arians. Now, I have a lot of people that I'd like to thank. I can only name a few. First, starting with my family. Uh, my oldest son couldn't be here. He's in college. But my wife, Tanika, who takes care of everything and everybody at all times and is the head of the household, despite I think I'm head of the household. And Troy and Tyson, I can't say enough about, you know, it's a joy to go home and enjoy coming home from work when I do have to come home. I like to thank the Glazer family for giving me this opportunity, you know, getting to know Ed, Brian, Darcy, Joel, the entire Glazer family over the past three years have been a straight joy for me. Nothing but a class act, great people, not just great owners, great people individually. And they're all different in their own right. And they're all very respectful. I have a great deal of respect for. They understand the game. They understand the business. And they're very easy to talk to. So I look forward to continuing that relationship. I would like to thank the Glazer family for giving me that opportunity. Like Jason said, you know, we've known each other since Arizona. We have a great working relationship and personal relationship, as well as a lot of other guys on the scouting staff side and the personnel side, Bill and Spy Tech, to name a few, obviously. But I look forward to that. I may not be the coolest guy he'll ever meet, but I'm pretty damn chilled myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'll take that. And Bruce will always be the coolest. So I'll, I'll go over to the chill category and I'll try to start something there. But you know, it, it's a great opportunity today. Bittersweet, but sweet. He's happy. He's healthy. I'm happy. He's healthy. We're happy. He's healthy. And we're going to try to continue on and do a lot of things that we've done for me, myself. I'm the defensive side of the ball knows me pretty good. I'm pretty sarcastic as despite you guys thinking I'm very quiet. I'm probably the most talking guy on the field uh, <laughs> at practice time. So, you know, that'll come out pretty soon. The offensive guys know me. They'll get to know me a little bit more from that aspect. I think we got a great group. I think core group to carry on. You know, we have an offense, we have a defense, we have to coach it better, we have to play it better. I'll say that every time we lose a ball game. So, and that's a fact because we're in this thing together. We're in this thing together. We're going to ride this wave. I look forward to getting to call the teammates, especially on offense. I will call each and every individual, whether they answer or not, we'll see. But we got to get this thing going and we want to get back on track. And you should have a sour taste in your mouth after last year. I know I still do. And that's all the time when you don't win the big one. That's that's common knowledge and common sense. So we're going to get this train moving the right way. 
I'm excited for this opportunity. When Bruce and the Glazers turned this over to me, Bruce being the head man and allowing the Glazers, it wasn't just Bruce, it was the Glazer family that had to turn it over to me as well because they run this building. Jason had to turn it over to me and a lot of people had to be in agreement for this to happen. This is not a one man show. So from ownership, uh, general managers, head coaches on down to make this decision, I feel very humbled. I feel very honored. I feel very excited. I'm ready to go and we'll try and get this thing rolling. Thank you, coach. We're going to go ahead and open it up to a question and answer session here now. If you can please again, raise your hand and the microphone will be extended. Hey, Todd, uh, hey, just wondering what the biggest learning lesson was after your experience in New York and what you're bringing here to the box. I think when you take a head job, you know, you have to wear a lot of hats but you don't ever experience wearing those hats. And when you understand that going in without the experience, I think you tend to do things a little differently. And you have to be man enough to know when you can change things. Usually when people get fired, they blame everybody else. The first thing I did was look within myself. And there were a lot of things I can do better that Bruce gave me warning signs for when I left Arizona that I saw in New York firsthand. And a lot of things transpired to run a building and putting the right hat on at the right time and understanding the right people at the right time. Instead of lumping everything in one whole lump and dealing with it that way, you have to treat it individually and you can't sweat the small stuff and you got to move on from there. And I think that experience has helped me become and stand right where I am today and be a better coach going forward. Hey, Todd, Greg Allman over here. Congratulations. When Bruce stood there three years ago, he talked about how much, how comfortable he was because of the coaching staff he was able to bring here to Tampa. Um, you've worked with just about everybody on this staff for three years, which is more than most new head coaches can say. I just want to ask you about the, the confidence and the comfort that you have from that and, and how you'll handle splitting up the defensive duties now as well. Well, the comfort level is outstanding. I've worked for most of these guys, with most of these guys for more than three years. We were together in either Arizona, New York, or somewhere else. So, the comfort level, Byron, Goody, Casey, Foot, Ross, Rapone, Gilbert, McNair, everybody is very, it's very comfortable from that standpoint. We all know each other. We all get along. We all are our own individual leaders, but come together collectively as coaches to make us a better team. And that's what we're going to continue to do. It's not about who's the smartest. It's about us coming to an agreement and being right and being on the same page when we play, regardless of what side of the ball it's on. And Bruce has taught us that. And we're going to carry that on as far as defensive duties uh there'll be co dcs with casey rogers and larry foot carry on i will still call it this year but they will run a lot of the defense going forward todd congratulations thank you um todd starting today you're the public face of uh, of a franchise that uh, kind of is in the forefront of nfl diversity how much does that mean to you it means a lot, you know, being a person of color, you want to get hired off of your ability, you know, but as a kid to see some people like us in these places and the, in these jobs, it gives hope to a lot of people. You don't coach for that reason, but being a kid growing up and going around neighborhoods and speaking to people, you understand the impact that it has on their lives. And we just try to be the best coaches we can be going forward. And you got to credit Bruce to giving everyone a chance and everyone on the staff understands the difference in diversity and how to be a good coach but you better be a good coach first and i think he did a good job creating both and getting both in this building so it means a lot to me and how much uh, better of a coach will you be the second time around with uh, number 12 under center now no it's always great to have him on the center finally i get to play with him instead of against him you know he's not beating my head in we'll have some spirited practices uh, we had great conversation. I, I, I think the world of the guy, I think we're more alike than you could ever know on the scenes, even though it doesn't look like it on the surface. He's probably a little more chill than I am. So I got to find a new thing other than that, too, because Bruce took cool and Tom took chill. But, you know, I, I got to find my niche in this whole thing without being a jerk about it. So I'm going to look for that and try to find that. Uh, I was eating because I was stressed out. Can you? I can find it. Todd, Bruce, 
Bruce mentioned that he thought you should have got an opportunity to be a head coach after the Super Bowl. And I know you had interviews after that season and after the past season. How disappointing was it? How frustrating was it for you to get passed over? And were there moments of doubt or frustration that you may not get another opportunity? It's not frustration. Anytime you get an opportunity, I think it's an opportunity to learn, to grow, uh, to get inside organizations and see how they run things. And if you don't get the job, it's actually a plus because when you go back to play those teams, you understand a good deal about certain things going on in the building. You can only control what you control. It, you try to be the best coach you can be, whether that's an assistant, a quality control coordinator or a head coach. You be the best coach you can be because you can live with yourself every day. And whatever job you get, you earn because other people see it. So sometimes the timing isn't right. There's only 32 of these things in the league. So you're talking about all the football programs in college and 32 in the professional league. It's hard to say you're disappointed. And to be even considered for the opportunity is really a blessing, no matter how many times you have to do it. You may get frustrated a little and tired a little and I expect Byron to get one. I expect Goody to get one. I expect a few people on the staff to have head coaching opportunities and head coaching jobs. So it's just staying with the process and staying in the moment and being the best coach you can be and let the opportunity take care of itself. Todd, congratulations. I wanted to ask you about being a defensive minded head coach. That's your background. That's what you're going to be calling this year, obviously, on the sidelines. The league has, over the last couple of years, been a younger, offensive-minded, driven type of, of process when it comes to hiring coaches. You're carrying the flag for the defensive coaches. What does that mean to you, and 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 why can defensive-minded coaches in today's NFL still have success? I don't consider myself a defensive-minded coach when I become a head coach. I am a head coach of the entire team. There will be situational football. That me and Byron will talk about third and one. He answers questions so well. You become, you become a head coach. coach. You, you become, become a head coach, coach I think there's this thing going around that defensive coaches are, can't be head coaches because you don't see them. And I think it's quite the contrary. Obviously, Belichick is an outstanding head coach, and we have a few in this league that are very good head coaches. And if you look back at the Super Bowls with Dungy and Belichick and Tomlin and Parcells, you can go back years and years and find success as defensive coaches winning Super Bowls and being very good coaches. But, you know, it's a phase in the NFL, and people get – caught up in the moment, but they're good football coaches on both sides of the ball. And I think we got to try to make that a little more fair and a little more even. And the only way you can do that is to try and stop people. And that's what we're going to try and do. Congratulations, coach. Um, Bruce had said that he wasn't entirely sure what his job responsibilities will be. How can he help you assimilate into this new role when you guys have the draft, say, a month away? Because he's been in it. He's seen it. He's done it. And up until this week, he's been involved in it. So there's a great deal he can help me on. You know, I found out Monday. So my draft process has strictly been about the defense. And he's got a great deal of film knowledge and knowledge on the offense, along with Jason and his crew, to understand what we're trying to draft and how we're trying to see him. I will catch up in the next few weeks before the draft. But at this point in time, He's going to be a great help to me in the draft process because he's seen everything. He understands everything and he kind of knows what we need. He knows what kind of offense we runs and, you know, he can give me great valuable advice that way. Todd, are you able, are you able to tell us who gave you the, the word that you were going to be the head coach and what your feelings were when it came to fruition? Well, coach Aaron's gave me the word. He called me on Monday and and I was a little bit stunned, obviously, because you weren't expecting that. It's owner's week and your week off. So, you know, he gave me the word on Monday and let me know. So I had a, two days to kind of calm down and see it all and go through. And, you know, I talked to Jason. I talked to Joel. Uh, and everything was going at a pretty rapid pace. And we sat down and talked yesterday for a while. And they were very comfortable. I feel very comfortable. I feel very blessed to even have the opportunity that they trusted in me. You know, and I'll talk to the coaches next week and we all have a great relationship and they know my door is open to talk to them as well as them talking to me. And we'll try to keep this train moving. But again, uh, between Bruce, Jason and the big effort of the Glazer family, here I am. We've got time for a couple more. 
Todd, over the last three years, I'm sure there are things that pop up where you say, if I ever get the opportunity to be a head coach again, these are the things I want to implement. This is how maybe I want to do things a little bit different. Is there is there one or two things that kind of stick out that you've learned over the last three years that you thought, this is how I have to proceed moving forward as a head coach if I get that chance? No, I, I think Bruce hit it right on the head. I'm just going to be me. I, I cannot be him. I don't expect to duplicate the things he's done. done. Exactly. He won a Super Bowl Just in a division. Be you. I want to duplicate that part, but probably with some tweaks in a different way. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, and I'm just going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. I cannot wear a Kango hat. I cannot be cool. I cannot be – I can wear a ski cap when it gets cold, but I can't wear a Kango hat. So I'm going to do it my way with a lot of advice from him, a lot of advice from the other coaches, but I'm gonna usually say what I feel and I'm a very honest guy. We're very straightforward there and we'll get to know that as a group as well. So, you know, that's the best advice that I've gotten. I think when I first started in New York, you try to do things the right way, then you don't do it your way, you end up having regret. So I'm gonna do things my way. Sir, I know you're a family man. Uh, what was your family's reaction and what does this mean for them to be here in Tampa long term? Well, my wife was shocked and she couldn't believe it. Uh, I told my son, who's now a junior, when we came here, he was a freshman, that I let him finish high school for four years and I wouldn't transfer him again because obviously with coaching, you're in a lot of different places. So I'm, I'm happy to fulfill that promise to him. Obviously, my younger son is 11 years old. The world revolves around him, so he enjoys life as it is. And... <laughs> My son in college was very happy. Todd Jr., he was very happy for me. And, you know, it, it's great because I stand up here and every time I do a press conference, I really try and talk to them because you have to teach your team as well as your kids when you're up here. You just can't be up here talking. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the press conference. That was awesome. Congratulations, Todd Bowles. You did it. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. And also, I see your family is happy because, you know, it's good to see, you know, we got these positive black brothers out here doing something. And he did it. You know, he hung in it. And, you know, the Jets... I feel that the Jets did you wrong. That's just my thoughts and opinions. And it kind of, you know, kind of like a little downer for me with the Jets and everything and stuff. But now God closed one door and opened another door. So ladies and gentlemen in life, always remember, you know, doors might be closed and one thing in your life, but then other doors will be open. And it actually could be better. He has a five-year contract, him and his family. They're quite happy about it. And... Look at his little bitch. Ah, I can't believe this man's in his 50s. Are you kidding me? Great skin. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, again, congratulations, Todd Bowles. You did it. You are the head coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Woo! Congratulations. So, everybody, share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Tell me what you think it is. Uh, what do you feel? Because we only have three black head coaches out here. Are you kidding me? You know, eh, it is what it is. So, congratulations to your success, Mr. Todd Bowles, and your family. I'm so happy for you. You did it. All right. Hit the like, share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Don't just be real. The only way to be.